Hello everyone, Danny Garola here with Stampin' the Pink Barn coming to you from Tucson, Arizona. So I'm sorry I was just a few seconds late here. I, uh, the UPS guy shows up right when I was getting ready to go live. And so I had to run outside because we have a few packages that have to go back. So I had to go running out there and make sure that the package that, is, that were here um, were the ones that I needed to accept. Also, uh, our neighbors showed up and it is her birthday today. So me and my mom wanted to make sure we stood out on the patio and sing happy birthday to her when she showed up. <laughs> So we had to do that. That was something that was very important that I had to do that for her. Um, so yeah, so I'm sorry. I'm a few minutes late popping in here, but it looks like you guys are all able to find me. Hello, Patty. Who else just popped in here? Hello, Peggy. Welcome, you guys. Thank you for sharing, Patty. Okay, there we go. Now I just got you guys pulled up on my other device. Hello, Pauline. Come in, say hi, let me know where you're watching me from. Hello, Frida. I hope you're feeling better, dear. Um, I know you've had a very, very big round of the sniffles. It's probably more than sniffles, but um, you sound like you really went through the ringer with being sick. I'm sorry, and I hope you're on the mend. And all the things that you're writing about what your work and your manager is doing to you, ugh, like, eesh. No, thank you. So, um, Pauline from Minnesota, welcome. So I hope you guys all had a wonderful Thanksgiving and got your eat on. Um, I know we did. I was very, very thankful for being here on the property with my parents and um, all of us being able to celebrate together. Um, it was a very, very wonderful, chill Thanksgiving. We, um, of course, a turkey, a, a very traditional Thanksgiving. Um, it was requested since last year. We did a very non-traditional Thanksgiving. And even though it went over well last year, um, everybody requested to have the traditional food so that is what we did this year and it was a wonderful wonderful time um we went or i didn't but my husband and my son they went out on black friday and um scored some sets of legos that were on special since legos cost a small fortune and we were able to get them at a pretty good price um he also went to costco and grabbed a few little goodies that they had on a black friday deal so that was good um also, I wanted to let you guys know I will not be live next Monday since um, we are going on vacation. We are going to take up, take off up north. Um, we have a uh, little resort that we've had booked for the last couple of months to go up there and enjoy uh, just getting away from, you know, the move, everything that's been going on. And now that we are able to just de-escalate from you know, all that craziness, we are going to go up there and hopefully it is snowing. I know they were saying the end of this week that a couple of our mountains here close to us, it's supposed to um, snow on. So I am hoping that us being up north, it should be snowing up there too. So we have been making sure we're pulling out um, some of the winter clothes, um, seeing if boots still fit and all that kind of stuff, which... Um, me and my husband's stuff still fits, but I had to reorder new stuff for, no, thank you. Look, mom delivered me a cup of coffee. <laughs> yes, I am spoiled. <laughs> um, so I had to order him some bibbed overalls, the snowsuit bibbed overalls, and then um, we ordered him a new jacket since teenagers grow quite quickly and uh, outgrow everything. Mm, mm. beautiful beautiful I made her make me a cup of decaf I didn't make her but I asked her to do decaf this time because I was like you know I don't want to be up all night long hello Lois welcome 
Well, good, you're alive. Woohoo! <laughs> and you're here visiting with us on Monday evening. So, yes, um, that is what is going on in my life. We are getting, um, my husband actually spent yesterday and today, he is on vacation this week as well as next week. So, we are getting things like taken care of around here because when we moved in, we kind of just shoved things in the, the shed, didn't have time to organize it because we were just trying to get everything moved up here so we could just be moved. And then he has been working um, like a horse, you know, just so much because of the holidays and because of his job is very demands for the holidays. Um, he has just been so stinking busy that finally, we decided that we were gonna take, he was gonna take this week off as well and try to get some things done around here that needs to be done. Um, so the last couple of days we've spent uh, time completely reorganizing our shed. He actually went into town late last night and um, went to Home Depot and bought a bunch of those big totes. Um, I, he wiped, he actually went to Costco first he wiped out the shelves at Costco because I think Costco has them on sale right now. So he was able to get only 10 of them at Costco. And then um, I think he got either 10 or 15 more at Home Depot. So the shed looks amazing. He has spent the day completely reorganizing. Yesterday, I just went through every box because we had cardboard boxes full of stuff. Well, there has been a couple of little mm, mice destroying things especially like paper and my scrapbook stuff and I'm just like oh god you you put traps and that sometimes doesn't you know they don't care about the trap they just want to eat my paper so uh we have completely gotten rid of all the cardboard boxes my Christmas stuff my Halloween stuff is now in these big organized totes it looks beautiful in our shed <laughs> it's almost picture worthy, but I didn't get a picture of it because I'm just not camera savvy. So that has happened. Um, and it does feel so nice to have that done and to be able to walk in there and now know what our totes are and because I've written on the sides of them. So that's that's a great, great feeling. Um, don't forget, you guys, last chance. Uh, list is out. You can go get that list. It's a downloadable PDF over on my blog, uh, stampinthepinkbarn.com. You can go there. It's under the promotions tab. If you scroll down, you'll see the last chance. So when I say last chance, that means the products that are retiring from this beautiful holiday catalog. This is in current rotation right now. This, uh, mini holiday catalog. This goes from September to December. Actually, it goes through like January 3rd, I think, or January 2nd is the last day of this catalog. But there are some um, pretty good deals going on in this catalog right now that are on some of the product that are going to be retiring out of there. Um, now with that, that does mean there is a new catalog coming out. Um, if you are a current customer of mine and you have placed a uh, order with me within the last year, you will get um, one of those new catalogs coming to you in the mail. Now, if you are new to me and you're not a current customer, um, now is a great time to place an order with me and that will instill you to get a catalog. Now, in order for me to have a catalog sent to you through Stampin' Up, which is going to be the quickest and easiest way for you to get a catalog, um, you must place your order with me by the 28th because I do place that um, order on the 29th for those catalogs. So if you want to have a catalog shipped straight to you from Stampin' Up, again, which is gonna be the quickest way for you to get your new catalogs. And remember, not only is there a new catalog coming out at the beginning of the year, but we also have our most fabulous uh, celebrations happening at the beginning of the year. Now, Stampin' Up! used to do celebration twice a year. Now it is done once a year and it takes place in the beginning of the year during that uh, mini spring catalog. So it is where you can get yourself some freebies added onto your order when you place increment orders of $50, $100 increments. 
um, you can pick some wonderful, wonderful things out of that celebrations brochure and add those straight to your order and they are free to you, which is amazing. And they're, it's the only way you would be able to get those things. Now those things cannot be bought or purchased any other way than earning them through your uh, order of your um, increments of 50 to $100 um, increment placements or uh, purchases. And so uh, though it is a wonderful time for that. Now, me telling you that, I don't want you to, you know, discredit the holiday catalog because there are some things that are up to 60% off on that. Again, go get your list. It's very, very tiny. Make sure you, um, if you have old eyes like mine, you're going to definitely want to grab your readers to be able to read these. Um, there are some pretty good deals in here. There's actually a stamp set that I was just looking at. Um, there's actually a couple of things on here that are up to 60% off. Um, there is the, where did I just see it? Again, my eyes, I can't see. The Precocious Pinecone Photopolymer Stamp Set is 60% off. So just make sure you look through this. And also there is the other list that is on there that is the carryover um, products. Now those will be carried over to either the um, annual catalog for next year. So our catalog, I believe, ends in April. So this would carry over into the next uh, annual catalog. So that is our year catalog that runs. So those will probably be added in there or they will save some of those and put those in next um, year's uh, holiday mini catalog. It sounds like UPS might be showing up or not UPS because I just dealt with UPS. I think FedEx might be showing up out there now, but I think if they do, I would be hearing the dog barking. So hopefully I don't miss anything. Otherwise, oh well. <laughs> I know my mom's keeping watch out there. So alrighty. Um, let me think. Tonight, we are going to be using the Joy of Christmas. Now, this set for Make It Monday this week, this is a two-parter um, stamp suite. So that means it comes with, not two-parter, I guess that's not really what you want to say, but it comes with two different bundles in this suite if you choose to buy it as a suite. Um, I did check and it looks like everything is still available in this. Now that can change on a spot of a dime. I mean, I could be talking right now and it can run out of um, on the order and I'm pretty sure they probably wouldn't order anymore since this catalog does um, run uh, through the end of the month. So um, this is the suite that I am going to be featuring tonight. I am using both bundles. This is the um, Joy of Christmas suite, but if there is one of the bundles that you like better than the other, you can always choose to not purchase it as a suite and just order those separately. So just to let you know that, hello Kay, hello Anna, hello Courtney. So I just wanted to show you guys that, that that's what I am going to be using for this week's um, Make It Monday. So the way Make It Monday works is when um, you purchase uh, $35 or more in my online store and you use my current host code, which is right here and I know it's backwards on here, but when I flip you around, you'll see it sitting on my desk. When um, you place that order, $35 or more, and use that host code, you must use the host code, um, you're going to get a package in the mail that looks a little something like this. Um, minus the finished card. Yours is not going to have the finished cards in there. That's just mine to show me, you know, as we go, I can show each card, but you're going to get three envelopes. Each envelope is going to contain all the products that you're going to need um, to create the beautiful cards that I have made for you tonight. So that way, if you already have these bundles and or this suite, you can, um, get your already pre-cut cardstock 
and be able to make the three beautiful cards that I am going to feature for you guys tonight. The only thing that I do not include is I do not include any stamped images because as of Stampin' Up! policy, I am not allowed to stamp anything for you. That's your job. Um, I will just provide the paper. I will provide ribbon for you if any of my cards use ribbon, which a couple of the cards tonight do, do use ribbon. Um, and I do not um, send out any embellishments. I'm pretty sure if you're a card maker, you probably have a million different embellishments and I want you to be able to use your embellishments the way you choose on these cards because you can put anything on there and make them glorious. So um, we are going to get into this. I'm gonna get you guys flipped around, um, but first I'm going to take a drink of coffee. We are going to do the giveaways for last week's cards that I made. So every week I give away a couple of the cards that I've made from the previous week. And that way um, you will already have a pre-made card if somebody you know happens to just stop by and you need a you know card to give out, you will have one already pre-made for me. Now the way the giveaway works is you need to come in here and just comment. Tell me, hi, I'm from such and such. And that is how you get um, entered into the drawing for the commenting giveaway. Now, there is a little heart or a little thumb on your screen somewhere on there. It might have a little face next to it. If you throw me up some thumbs, you throw me up some hearts, that is going to get you added into the giveaway for the liking my video. There you go. There's those hearts and those thumbs. That's going to get you automatically entered into the like category drawing. Then there is the third category, which is for sharing my video. So if you hit, there's a little arrow on the bottom of your um, screen there and it is the share button. If you hit share and then say it's going to ask you part two, you're going to share it to your news feed. Once you share my video, you're going to come back here and you're going to comment just a simple word, share. That way I'm going to know that you shared my video to your news feed. And then that way I am going to enter you into the drawing for a fabulous prize. Now, those prizes change weekly. Sometimes it is a package of embellishments. Sometimes it's a ribbon. Sometimes it's even a full stamp set. So it's just a wonderful way to share my video and help me grow my business. And I appreciate you so much for doing that, that I kind of just up the ante on that because it is a big ask. But you guys are so wonderful sh for sharing my video. Anyways, I just want to thank you for doing that. All right, let me get you guys flipped around. So hold tight. Okay, I think that looks pretty straight right there. Um, minus the fact, let me slide this thing over just a skosh because I don't think you guys need to be staring at the base of my other light there. That's not good. I'm going to bring you guys down a skosh because I need to know where I'm stamping and what part of the um, desk here I am showing you. Um, let me scoot it back just a skosh. I need to go this way because we're crooked and we don't want crookedness. Does that look straight? Yep. Okay. I think that's good right there. I think I'm gonna leave everything alone. The camera looks straight. Um, we've got all the blocks there. We've got ink there. All right, I think we are ready to go. So the paper pumpkin that is in the current rotation right now, this is the December paper pumpkin. This is called All the Best Paper Pumpkin Kit. This um, is available right now for you to subscribe or you can buy the prepaid um, subscription to go ahead and just purchase the one-time kit to try this out. Um, the December Paper Pumpkin Kit comes with all the pieces you need to make nine homemade cards detailed with yellows, blues, and gold foil. This kit also comes with an acetate box for you to store your finished cards and envelopes. You can gift the box of cards to a loved one 
and they can gift a card to someone else. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Share your love of crafting with those around you using the all the best paper pumpkin kit. So this is going to include nine cards, three each of three designs and nine coordinating envelopes, one acetate box to fit cards and envelopes from the kit, one pebbled path ink spot, one photopolymer stamp set, embellishments, specialty gold foil die cuts, and enough adhesive to finish the project. If you want to see more about this kit or know what Paper Pumpkin is even about, you can visit my blog at stampinthepinkbarn.com. If you hit promotions, scroll down and you're going to see the all the best um, little blog post there. And once you click on read more at the kind of the little bottom of that uh, post, you can go in there and read all about what Paper Pumpkin is even about and how you can get yourself subscribed or the one-time purchase of this kit. Um, do know that when you do start a subscription through Paper Pumpkin, if there's ever a time that a box just doesn't look like it is kind of your jam, you can always put your subscription on pause and you know, reactivate it when you are ready to um, rejoin the uh, Paper Pumpkin subscription. So um, this is a wonderful way if you um, know anybody who wants to get into crafting and this is a wonderful way to uh, sit down with the grandkids, sit down with friends and family and kind of just make cards together because like I said, this does make nine cards. So you can all sit down and craft together and you can teach them things that maybe you know and um, let them have fun crafting with you. Okay, so there is that. All right, let's get to our um, cards for last week. So let me get out my little note here so I can see who I am giving these away to. All right, this gorgeous card right here, we use that holographic paper. And of course my device is going to be janky and it's going to stop working. So hold on, let me pull myself back up here. Okay, there we go. Oh, thank you, Denise. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Courtney, for sharing. Thank you guys so, so much. So this here we made, um, I used the Celebrate the Miracle last week for Make It Monday. And this is the beautiful All About the Hanukkah cards. So this one here, I used holographic paper behind here. So it's got that kind of rainbowy shimmer to it. The inside says sending love and light. And we just put the Star of David there. So this beautiful card for liking last week's video. This is going to Courtney Austin Darp. So Courtney, I know you're on here. This is going to be coming in the mail to you. So if you know anybody who celebrates Hanukkah, this will be a beautiful card that you can send to them if you don't have any already made. And I know Hanukkah starts, I think it's the 9th of December. So this will come to you in time for you to get out in the mail to them. Okay, so that is going to Courtney. All right, where did I put the other one? This one here is using the rose gold paper on the background of that. Very, very pretty. This says Happy Hanukkah, again with the Star of David in the inside. It says Celebrate the Miracle. Um, I love the two tones of the blues with this. It's very, very traditional Hanukkah colors. This is going to miss Frida Alsip. Frida, this is going to come your way. So if you know anybody who celebrates Hanukkah, you'll have a card ready for them. And then for sharing last week's video, I am going to be gifting this better places stamp set along with I have a open package here of the garden gems that I didn't quite um, use that much of them so the only ones that I used were just a couple maybe 10 of them up here but I never used these beautiful blue ones here so I figured you know what I'm gonna throw this in as kind of just a little freebie because uh, I'll never use them again, so I might as well gift them to somebody else who can use them. But this is a cling stamp set. You've got your uh, stickers here that need to go on those. This is called Better Places. This is going to 
Denise Wager, Wager, I'm not sure if I say the G correctly in your name, but this is going to be going to Denise for sharing last week's video. Thank you so much, you guys, for helping me build my business and um, keep doing and bringing these videos your way. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Peggy. Did I see you come in, Peggy? Did I already say hi to you? For some reason, I keep thinking that, but that was the first time I think I saw your name. I don't know. So hi again, <laughs> if I already said hi. Uyghur, 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 Uyghur. Okay, Uyghur, is that right? I don't know. Gur is in tiger. <laughs> All right, mm, that coffee is very good. My coffee never tastes as good as her coffee. You know what I came to the conclusion to think why her coffee tastes so good is because I am, okay, I'm just cheap. And so I use tap water in my coffee pot. Now my mom's a little bit more bougier and she uses bottle watered, bottled water in her uh, coffee pot. And I think, honest to God, it must make a huge difference because her coffee tastes so much better. So that's the only conclusion that I can come to. All right, so for the first card that we're going to be making tonight, um, this is Making Spirits Bright, and I've used the uh, tailored tags as kind of an extra bonus on this card, but isn't that pretty? Again, we are using the two um, bundle here. This is, now these are some pretty big uh, stamp and die sets. This one is the Joy of Noel. And then you've got the dies that cut out both of your greenery. You also have the die that cuts the little hollyberry twig here. You've got Joyous, Making Spirits Bright, and your Noel. Now, if you want to, you can stamp the Noel and die cut all four letters separately. You've got three of the different holly leaves here, which you've got here. Um, you've got some sprigs of like a spruce sprig. And then this die cuts five of these little, um, I would say, hmm, what would you call those? Just little branches. So really, really great set there. But then we've got the Christmas classics also. Hello, Kim. Now this one has a big die set with it. This one is more of your sentiment. This is more of your images over here. So this has got seasons, greetings. You've got Christmas, happy, merry wishes, holiday to you and yours. Deck the halls, peace on earth, tiding of comfort and joy. You've got a sprig here of those spruce. Um, got the holly leaves with some holly berries, but wait till you guys see the die set that comes with this. So with, if I can get them unstuck here, with this one, you've got these big labels. So this one you can cut out in one color, but then you've got this single one that you could actually put your greeting in. Like if you were to cut this out in gold, then you can use a piece of white or red and use your embossing powder on there. So you've got this that you can do your sentiment on. Then you've got these that cut out um, your background paper so you can add just a little bit of texture to it. You've got the big holly leaf here. This is to cut out this sprig here. So very, very cool. But there's even more to this that just makes this even more beautiful. You've got this big bordered uh, square here for doing um, like a frame. And then again, they give you the inside of the frame to cut out that you can do that in a different color. Perfect, Kim. That's awesome. You're going to love this set. And again, it is a very big set. Um, you've got the two leaves here. We're going to actually use these tonight. Those are just kind of an extra um, leaf thing that you can cut out here. This one cuts out your um, holly leaves. And then you've got the holly berries and it cuts out two of those at a time just so you can see what a wonderful set this is. Let me show you the paper, <clears throat> the both the papers that are included. If you decide to purchase the whole sweet collection, you're gonna get two different packages of DSP with that. Now you're going to get the, this 
one is called Joy of Christmas, and this is pretty traditional colored uh, Christmas paper here. You're gonna get these pieces that have, sorry, I've got it all cut apart here, and then you've got some notes of um, music sheet, kinda, with some wood grain. You've got your holly leaves with the berries, your shaded spruce, here's some more leaves some holly berries and the back of those. You've got both of these that are pretty similar, but you just got the two different colors. Now the green that is in this is the shaded spruce. Now I've got to show you this other one because I've got these cut apart, but this is the other paper that has your pine cones in there along with some poinsettias and just those beautiful greenery. And then this one here, I have used on the other card. Look at that. And you guys know how I'm such a Buffalo check girl. I love this paper. There's the uh, little mini music notes on that. So that is the first pack that comes. And then you're going to get a specialty pack with it. This one has um, your gold foiling in with it. So you've got the shaded spruce with your gold foiling on that. The back of these are not double-sided because you've got so much beautifulness going on here. They're like, okay, if we give you double-sided, it's going to really just probably upset you to have to cut through that. This looks like a wood green, but it is in the gold foiling. Some more of those music notes here in the gold. And this is the cherry cobbler. And look how pretty this is with those holly leaves of gold. And then you've got the real red cherry cobbler um, holly berries. So very, very pretty paper that comes with this. You're also going to um, get the, what was the embellishment that came? Hmm. I'm not sure if it's the ones that I grabbed. Um, oh, right here. I think my mom has those. When I went to order them uh, quite a while ago, they were out of stock, so I never got them. I know she has them. I just am not certain where they're at. But there is a ribbon. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know where they're at. Um, but the ribbon that comes with this is the very vanilla and black check um, ribbon here again that comes with that suite these are like a loose a loose um, confetti kind of um, did I walk right past them are they oh that's probably them right there yep I would have never even thought to look over there all right look she heard me look at these aren't these fun so you can make some of your shaker cards and add these to that. Isn't that so cool for Christmas? You've got the music notes. Here, let me add some more in here so you can see it. Then you've even got, I just noticed this. These are rhinestones. These are not just little cutouts. These are actual rhinestones. So if you want to put adhesive down, you can stick these little rhinestones. Aren't those so fun? Oh, see? I didn't make any cards using those because I didn't have this stuff. My mom did, but. And then you've got the uh, large check ribbon here. Again, that is the very vanilla. Now, tonight I am using the thinner black and white, but I want you to know that with either one, this, the black and white that is available in the annual catalog and this one that is the very vanilla, and black you can use any of your stampin blends and you can change the colors of your ribbon to be whatever color your heart desires so i want you guys to see that if you are uh so swayed to buy the whole suite then you can see everything that comes in that because i like to be able to show you everything that you get kind of in real life all right, so we're gonna go ahead and start by making this beautiful card here. All right, so let me get out the pieces that I need. So I need to pull out my card base for card number one, because I've already got that already cut. And, oops, as I knock everything over, cut and placed here in my little envelope. 
Okay, so our card base, oops, look, I lost a little rhinestone here. So our card base, I decided to use real red on this card. This is eight and a half by five and a half. You will, you will find all the dimensions tomorrow over on my blog because tonight I'll have to take photos and get everything written up along with the shopping list. You'll find everything that I have used on these cards and you'll find the dimensions to everything. So you'll know exactly what size pieces I have used for this. I also have a piece of shaded spruce. This is a four by five and a quarter. That's gonna go next. Then I have that beautiful designer series paper here. I use the one that has the pine cones and the poinsettias. This is five by three and three, or yeah, three and three quarters. I then have two scraps. I decided to use that buffalo check one and then the shaded spruce with the gold uh, foiling on that. Now those two, I just have those cut big enough to be able to die cut my large tag from the tailored made tags. And we are going, I'm gonna show you guys how to cut two of these at one time so you don't have to kind of, you know, worry about cutting, you know, those individually. Then I have a piece of, let me see what this measures. This measures, um, I think it's about one inch. It's like just shy one inch. I have just a scrap here that I'm going to stamp my sentiment on. And then I have another scrap so I can stamp my um, florally image here and cut that. Then I have the Simply Elegant trim that I'm gonna use the gold for. And then the uh, this is called the Satin Edged Ribbon. Now that is kind of in that very vanilla with just some beautiful gold um, edging in there. So I'm gonna use that as well. Okay, so let me get to this and bring in, I'm gonna bring in the die cutting machine. I'm gonna use the little mini here and grab the, oops, I need the other one. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab my number one plate and then I need the two number two plates since I'm going to be doing die cutting. Now, you should have one of your plates that looks pretty haggard like this. And then you should have one that, you know, isn't so haggard because this one's always going to go on the top. Now, a lot of people switch these up and it doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of particular where I like to have one that is more choppy and the other one that's not. So both of these pieces are the same size, which I just have it a little bit bigger than my tag there. So this is two and a quarter by four and a quarter. They're both the same size. I'm going to just layer those together just like that. I'm gonna lay that on the number one plate, my haggard one, and then I'm gonna take my die and I'm gonna lay that right on top of both of those that are set together there. And then I'm going to simply run this through my die cutting machine, if I can get this to sit still, and cut those both at the same time and save myself the trouble of having to do this double time. And I do it once forward and once back just to make sure I get a nice deep cut through both of those pieces. And as you can see, it cut perfectly both of those out at the same time. And then I just have these little scraps here that I can just toss. And wango bango, they're both done. Just as easy as that. Okay, I can put all this away. And then now we can get to this card. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my, because I do need to die cut that as well. So I just have my piece of scrap over my piercing mat here. So let me get out that I'm gonna be using the smaller of the two 
little greenery pieces here. Okay, let me grab a bigger block here so I can make sure that'll fit just like so. I am using my Memento ink since I am going to be using my Stampin' Blends to color this in. And since it is alcohol ink, I need to use Memento so my black ink does not uh, smear. So I'm gonna hold that for just a few seconds and give that some time to marinate into that paper. Just like that. Okay, I gotta put my hair up really quick. I'm starting to have a hot flash. And I didn't even do anything embarrassing. I'm actually doing okay today, but I'm still having a hot flash. Welcome to getting old. Okay, so now I am going to grab my colors here and I have decided to grab the Real Red, the Old Olive, and the Shaded Spruce. And so what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to grab the Light Shaded Spruce and I am going to color in the holly leaves with the light shaded spruce. I don't know what my deal is, I'm shaky tonight. Oh, that's, I did wanna tell you guys, since I know most of you guys have been following me for a while, I went in and I had my echocardiogram done this following week and everything, I just got the test results today, everything came back normal. So that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, but it still does not answer why I have had a couple of those spells within the last couple of years. Um, this last one that I had being the worst. And um, the doctor, when I went to the hospital, they thought that I had a TIA. And now because of having the different tests that I've had done, they're kind of saying, no, it doesn't look like a TIA because there's nothing to kind of back that, um, that finding or that statement. So yeah, great news. But still makes you wonder, hmm, what are those thing? What are those weird episodes that I'm having then? Luckily, I haven't had another one since then, but you know, now the last thing that I need to go have done is I need to have my eyes tested and have a little bit deeper testing besides just an eye exam um, because she said that it could be like pressure behind my eyes. But like she said, even if there was pressure behind my eyes or whatever, it would not cause me to have the uh, mental forgetness that I had and the speech problem that I kind of was having where all my words were all slurring together. So I don't know because everything's coming back that I'm healthy and fine, but who knows? Okay. So now I am using the dark shaded spruce. I mean, it is great when you have your test results come back and everything comes back as being good, but then it leaves you wondering, well, then what is to explain, <laughs> you know, that caused this goofy thing to happen? All right, now I'm coming in with my light um, old olive, and this I'm just going to um, just copy over the sprigs of the uh, spruce here, and I'm using old olive. Just tracing over those lines, just adding a little bit of depth to this. Okay. And see, Kim, you saying that, that's why they thought that I had a TIA because, um, 
And thank God I'm not pregnant. <laughs> yeah, that is not an option. Um, that uh, um, they thought that it was the TIA from caused from a migraine because of the symptoms that I had. But they have realized that it was not because um, they say TIAs are mini strokes. And when I went in and had the, uh, what is that thing, either a CAT scan, I think it's a CAT scan, it's that big weird machine that spins around you. They did the contrast in my veins to make sure that nothing was being compressed or anything and they, they did not see any kind of um, previous stroke or anything like that, so I, I don't know. I don't know why it happened. I, you know, I did have kind of the same episode happen, um, the, like a, a year before that, but it wasn't quite as intense. I didn't lose my train of thought. I, you know, like I was telling you guys before, the weirdest thing is, and even my doctor had mentioned it to me. She said, you know, it's very bizarre that you could not remember, you know, main people's names and this kind of stuff, like popular people that you should know, like our presidents. I couldn't remember their names and I couldn't remember a name of a state that is very, you know, common in my vocabulary that I wouldn't forget. Um, that I forgot those things and, but yet I can remember every, like, Every phase that I was going through, I can remember everything that I was thinking, everything that I was trying to say. It's almost like my brain had a hiccup. And, and I know that kind of sounds really stupid and I know that's not a thing. But when I think back of what I went through, it just really seems like there was just like a space where my brain did not move to my mouth to make me say what I needed to say. I don't know. Maybe that's just my life. So, so um, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. And she just said it's very bizarre because most of the time when people have a stroke or people have an episode like that, they don't remember in depth like I can remember. I can remember the specific words that I was trying to say. And so she just said it. That's that's very odd to have that happen. So I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to use this little die right here and this is going to go on top of this. I probably need to grab a little piece of tape to hold this down um, to make sure I get this all even in here. So just like so. Just so it kind of stays in place while I get this all set up in here. Okay, we're going to pull this out of here. I'm going to save my tape. All right, there is our little die cut image. Isn't that so cute how that comes out? And those colors actually work so well with this paper. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get this card assembled. So I am going to go ahead and adhere Hello, Linda. I know, I'm sorry, the time is really messing with people. Um, I know it has definitely helped things in my life because then I'm not exhausted and sitting here yawning while I'm making a video because that's kind of tacky, but by the end of the day, I am exhausted. Okay, so now we're going to place this down. Just like so. Okay, and then we are going to grab these two and I'm going to put the green behind the red and I'm just going to off center that just a tiny bit. 
So I'm just gonna put some adhesive going down like that and take this. I want it to kind of line up with that hole. Okay, that works just like so. There we go. All right, we're gonna leave that for a minute. I am going to um, stamp our sentiment on this. So I need and I forgot my shaded spruce. Thank God she's got duplicates of everything. We're gonna use shaded spruce ink and we are going to use the Making Spirits Bright sentiment here. And I'm just gonna stamp that right in the center of that. Hello, Lynn. Welcome. Okay, that's gonna go just like that. Close this up. I'm gonna use the chamois really quick to wipe off the green of that. And while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and clean that little twiggy. Okay, now I need to grab my paper trimmer because I am going to just angle the ends of this. So I'm just gonna hold it and just angle that like so. Now, the way I do this is to make this the same angle is I just flip it around and I line this, this angle up here with one of my lines. Now, if it's not exactly on a line that I need it, I can still just watch and kind of eyeball it. Like say if it's in between two lines, I can look at the next line and know, see if it's straight or not. But I think if I go straight over to this line, I think that's gonna actually work perfect. Yep, that's gonna work. And then both of my lines are straight, okay? All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab the two ribbon that I need for this. So I'm just going to grab a small portion of the vanilla, and that is going to get put straight through here like so. Okay. Then I'm gonna grab just a bit of the gold trim. Thank you, Nancy, for sharing. Great tip on the angle. Yeah, I, I found that that just works so much easier for me if I just line it up on one of those lines because there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but that's just what works for me. Okay, I'm gonna take this and just tie this around just to get that where I need it. And then I'm gonna make a bow. Maybe if I can get my fingers to work. There we go, then I can pull on some of these. Get this kind of straightened up. Just like that, okay. Then I'm gonna get some dimensionals and we're gonna pop this up. Just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna angle that kind of going down towards the bottom here. Just like so. 
This I am going to, um, well, I was supposed to glue that down. So we're going to pop this up also. I, I should have glued this down and not popped it up, but whatever. No biggie. We're just going to have a little bit of extra dimension going on here. Okay, so that's going to go right like that. Now this... Since I have it double dimension, I'm gonna have to double dimension this little um, tag here. So the way I'm gonna do that is I am just going to waste a bunch, no, not waste, but I'm just going to double do these. Now, when I write out the tutorial for this, I will not bump that the tags up because those should be actually stuck straight down but it's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna place that just like so, right on there, just like that. There we go, there is that card. We need to do an inside prettiness to this. And then we are going to add a couple of pretty little embellishments to kind of make this extra blingy. So I am using, where did I put them? There they are. I am using the, uh, this is called the Blooming Petals. And I am going to use one of the big ones right over here. And then a couple of the little ones, I'm going to put one right there. And then another little one right up over here. There we go. And then I'm going to grab an inside. My mom cut out a bunch of innies for me. So I'm all prepped and ready with all the innards. Okay, so now let's decide what we want to say on the inside of this. Let me put this over here. I think I'm going to bring in maybe this little holly twig here. And then grab this little small. I'm gonna place that right there. And let's see about a sentiment. What should we say in the inside of this? Making spirits bright, we can say joyous, or, or we can grab the other stamp set and we can say um, making spirits right, deck the halls, we can say season's greetings. I think I'm gonna do the season's greetings up there. And I'm actually going to do that in the shaded spruce. Hello, Bonnie. Welcome. Okay, this is going to go right across the center here. Just like that. Beautiful. And then... We're gonna color in a couple of these little berries here. I'm gonna use my, since I use the light, I'm gonna use the light again, just to add just a little bit of color. Just like that. Oh, my nose is running now. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna turn this lamp on. to give myself a little bit of air because I almost start getting it gets stuffy and then my 
sinuses start acting up. Okay, so we're gonna just add that to the inside. Oh, how fun! That's awesome that you guys get together and play cards like that. Yeah, when we used to um, live in an apartment, we you and actually even after that, when we lived in a condo, we used to get together at the little uh, clubhouse thing and play cards and do stuff like that. And it was such a good time. It's one of those things that I really kind of miss living very rural that we do. We don't have things like that out here, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Playing cards is always a blast. All right, so there is our first card that is making seasons bright. And then it says seasons greetings are making spirits bright. So that is the first card. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so now we're gonna get to card number two. Now card number two is a fun fold and I know you guys have seen this fold around, but it is so much fun. I knew I had to share this with you. This is a step card, but it is using those little diamond pieces for the step. So we're gonna go ahead and make this super fun step card and it sits just like that. Isn't that cool? Okay, so. Let me get all my pieces out here. Okay, so you're gonna need a full sheet of cherry cobbler. Now, what you're gonna do, because for your main part for your card is you are going to cut this at five and a half inches. It is five and a half by 11, but when you go to cut your five and a half, like so, you're gonna cut this over at five and a half. Be sure to hang on to this piece. You're going to need this piece for those little diamond shapes on your card, okay? So, what I'm going to do first is we are going to do some scoring on this to get our card base to have those steps in it. So what we need to do is, first I need to move my mess out of the way. Okay, we're gonna open this arm up and we are going to do some scoring. So now you have a five and a half by 11 piece. We are gonna flip this to the 11 um, going vertical and we are going to score it this way. So your first score needs to be at uh, three. So make sure your blade, your cutting blade is out of the way and all we want is our score tool. We're gonna do three. We're going to do six. We're gonna do seven and a half. nine, and 10. Just like that. So you're gonna have all these different little score marks in here. Okay, now you're gonna take this and with your big three inch part down here, you're gonna fold that in on itself. Okay, then you're gonna go, after you have the three inch, you have another three inch here, you're gonna now fold up. You're gonna fold back down. So see how we're making all these valleys and mountains? And then now go back up on itself. And then back down on itself because those are all the same sizes going back on themselves, okay? There is our steps. So you've got a little mountain, little peak, big mountain, big peak, and then the biggest mountain and the peak. So it looks like, it looks like a little accordion, right? Okay, so that is our base. Simple as that. 
Okay, we are going to take that and set that aside because now I'm gonna show you the pieces that you need to add to that and then we will get to cutting our little diamonds. So we have got these three pieces that we are going to add paper to because we are going to see these when it is sitting. We're gonna see the front panels of this. So your first piece that you need is three quarters um, wait a minute. I know I wrote it down. Yeah, three quarters by five and one quarter. That's gonna be our first piece. Our next piece is one and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then our big piece, this is two and three quarters by five and a quarter. So see how we see that? Those will be the pieces that we see as we're looking on this, okay? So we're gonna glue those on there. So I'm just gonna pull this back apart knowing that these are my pieces that are gonna be seen. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere those on first. Okay, and then our little smallest piece here. Just like so. So then when we fold that up, that's what it looks like. And then when we let go of it, it's gonna look just like that. Okay, set that aside. Now, coming back to this piece here, we are going to make our diamonds. So our first diamond needs to be three by three. Well, it just happens to be that this is three inches. So all we have to do is take this and cut a three inch square out of that. So that is our biggest square. Now, it almost looks like that's a little bit longer than three. So it shouldn't be, but sometimes your cardstock is a little bit bigger than 11 by eight and a half. Okay, so there is, just make sure you uh, measure and cut off any little strips. So that is a three by three. Our next one is going to be two and three quarters. So I'm gonna cut two and three quarters first and then spin it and cut two and three quarters. Okay, and that's the second. And then the last one is two and a half by two and a half. So you're gonna have this extra leftover for another card. Uh, what did I say? Two and a half by two and a half, right? Yep, two and a half by two and a half. Okay, there is my last little diamond. Now I think I have all my paper cut for what we need for the rest of it. So I'm gonna set that aside. There's my three squares. Set those aside, they'll be diamonds in just a minute. So with our, with the rest of our pieces that we need, I need a scrap piece of white so I can um, do our big focal image on the inside that we're going to do. I have a piece of that wood grain um, this is from the specialty pack that comes with the suite that I'm going to use to do my lettering with. Then I have a piece I'm going to use that buffalo check again. Now this needs to be cut at the uh, two and three quarters by two and three quarters because it is going to go on our biggest panel. So two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So it's gonna go on our biggest piece back here. So I'm just gonna set that on that one so I know. Our next piece of basic white that we need, this is two and a half by two and a half, which I'm pretty sure I already cut that. Okay, that is, that's gonna go on our second piece. 
Then the last piece that I'm using, this is going to be for my letters. So I'm actually going to cut this at the same size. So it's already at the two and a half. So I just need to cut it at two and a half. I just wasn't sure exactly what size I needed it at when I just cut it. I just had it sitting there, okay? So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to take it and I'm going to grab the Noel die for my letters right here. So I'm gonna grab this die. And this thing is all caught up on that. And what else we're going to need is I need to grab the dies out of the other set that we are going to use for the greenery on the front. So that is why I have a little um, scrap of shaded spruce. So I need that and I need that for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. So on the little designer series paper here, I am going to eyeball getting that as straight as I can on this piece, watching all my margins. I'm going to tape that down and cut that. Okay, so I'm gonna place that on there. This little shaded spruce piece, I'm going to lay with both of the dies on that because they don't have to be straight or anything. Now I'm gonna show you the reason why I cut this to the same size. So there's our O and our E and our N for that. Where'd my other sprig go? There it is. Okay, let me grab the Noel out of there. I have to put all these away because have you ever lost a die because you didn't put it away right after you were done using it? Yeah, I've been there, done that. And then it's gone forever. And then I'm so upset. So I have to take a little bit of time to put those away. And I know that's time consuming, but I know you guys understand. Okay, here are those two little sprigs that I needed to make from this green. Now in these, there are, now you can choose to leave them in. I'm going to pluck those little, um, I guess it's called weeding out the little guts. Some people leave the guts in them, I don't. I like that little open look. Okay, there are those. So there are our little things and we've got all these little green pieces all over the place. So let me just, see I could have grabbed, see watch, I can just leave that there. Watch how easy this is. I always forget. Whoop, there we go, they're gone. All right, there we go. Let me get this out of the way. We will have to use that one more time when we go to um, do our big focal image on the inside. Now, what I wanted to do with this and why I cut this out the same size as this square here is I want to show you guys the reason why I did it I had a purpose for cutting that out the same size as my small red square. I am going to put this on here and because it's the same size, I want to be able to see 
all four points sticking out the side of this little diamond, just like so, so I can line up my letters on this red square to be even. And I'm not measuring, I'm just going to eyeball it because that's how I roll. Hello, Carol. Um, I've been wondering where your little vacuum has been. Yep, it's been here. I just always forget to grab it. I've got too many things on my mind that I never think about grabbing that thing. But yep, they're here. I have the cow over at my house and my mom has the pig. Okay, so I am using this little piece here as a stencil to place my letters and get everything straight. So there was a method for my madness why I cut this the same direction. Then I get to line everything up straight in here because I tried it the other night and I failed to try to get these on this little square straight without doing it this way, I couldn't do it. It was a thing that I could not do and I, for the life of me, I tried. Trust me, I tried. So, if this is not your jam, then you can try and, you know, power to you if you can do it because I couldn't. <laughs> so, okay, we're gonna go just like that. Now that I have those all adhered on there, I can pull my little stencil right up off of there. You can save this for many more cards to come so you don't have to keep, you know, cutting these out. You're gonna have to cut out your Noel anyways, so you might just keep, you know, a hold of that. And then there you go, there is that Noel on there perfectly straight. Now I will have you know, you are gonna have a couple little pieces that hang over this, but, it's not going to affect anything, so just remember that. All right, let me set that aside. I'm gonna set this aside as well. I have to adhere this on here, and we are going to stamp um, on this, but I also learned last night that I need to have this all aligned on here before I stamp it because it didn't come out too straight and it was bothering me. So now we need to take this big piece here. I need to grab the big block and I'm going to grab the big greenery piece here and lay that, oops, don't throw it. Just lay it on your block. And then you can spank it if you need to, it's okay. It's not gonna cry. Um, let's clean this off before I throw anything in there. Because that green, that spruce green can get on everything. Okay, so now. Okay, that looks good. Minus the hair from my head. Okay, set that on there. Give that a second to soak into that paper. Marinate that sucker. Oh, that is another thing that I did this weekend, or not this weekend, but this week that I forgot to tell you guys about. I did canning. I canned um, some of my green beans. I had my husband buy a whole case of green beans and I wound up um, canning the heck out of my green beans. If I never see another green bean in my life, I will be okay with that. <laughs> I'm so sick and tired of green beans and having to cut them and cut all the little, you know, stem parts off the top of them because ugh, that's not fun. You don't want that in your jars of food. Okay, so now we're gonna bring these colors back in, but this time I am going to grab cherry cobbler because my cherry cobbler is my color of my paper. So I'm gonna grab the cherry cobbler pins and set my real red pins aside. 
but still staying with my shaded spruce and my old olive. We are gonna just come in here and start coloring these. So I'm gonna take my dark old olive. Oh, I have the hardest time getting the lid off of this one. I don't know why my lid is so tight on here. Okay, let's try this again. Sometimes I have to shake it. Ugh. Okay, struggle be real. Okay, I am going to just do the inside veins of these leaves here. Okay, I think that's it. See all that struggle just for that. And then I'm gonna color those in with the light old olive. Now, and the reason why I did the dark in there is to make it look like the vein of the leaf. Okay, just like so. Um, I'm also going to take the light and I'm gonna do this sprig right here. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the same thing in the dark shaded spruce in the little holly leaves. And then come in with the light and just fill those in. Okay, and then now I am going to grab the light, light cherry cobbler and just color in these little berries. Now there's not as much coloring on this one as there is the little one, but I just like the fact that Everything is so much bigger on this one that coloring really goes a lot faster because you've got just big areas that you don't have to quite worry about being so, not so sloppy in. <laughs> okay, we are going to die cut that. So let me bring this back in here. Let me grab the big die from that. That is this one right here that I keep having a heck of a time of it wanting to jump out of there. I hope this one's gonna fit in here, hopefully. Yeah, I think we'll make it. Okay, let me get that piece of tape again. Just to hold that in place. And I think that's going to work just fine. Okay, there is our big image there. And let me get this out of the way and the other one. 
All right, now let's get to business. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and adhere these two pieces together. And I know some people get pretty intimidated when they see a fun fold like this because they think there's just so much to it. But then when you see it made, it's like, oh my gosh, I can do that. <laughs> it's really not as hard as you think it is until you just see somebody make it. And then it kind of changes your whole thought process on it not being so crazy hard. Um, that's at least how I feel about it. Okay, so this big image here <clears throat> is just going to go on here, kind of overlapping those um, leaves off the side there. So you'll kind of see a little bit of that green off the top there. Okay, this one we need to stamp, but I'm going to adhere it to this first. And I think I'm gonna actually attach it to this and then I'm gonna stamp it because I'm telling you, it just doesn't work out very well. Well, maybe I'm gonna try it. We're gonna try and make sure we can get this straight. Okay, let me grab this. I am going to put the Tidings of Joy and Comfort stamp in this. <clears throat> Any one of these big ones would work in here. You've got the Peace on Earth, deck the halls, but I'm gonna use Tidings of Comfort and Joy. I just like that. Where'd it go? Oh. Good thing it didn't have teeth, they would have bit me. Okay, grabbing my black ink again. Okay, let's try to get this straight. Hopefully that worked. I think that worked. I'm also gonna take the little berries, um, or no, I'm not. I'm gonna take this, uh, where did I just see it, right there. I'm gonna take this, this has got the three little leaves holly leaves and I'm going to actually stamp that right at the bottom here just like so I'm going to take both of my shaded spruce using the dark first Coming in with the light. just like that, okay? There is the inside of that one. So now let's get this card assembled. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. And then, oh, but first, hold on a second. I fibbed, we're not done yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, this is the thinner, now this is not the one that comes with the sweet, because the one that comes with the sweet is thicker. It is the vanilla and black, uh, this is called the um, 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 Large Check Ribbon. I am using the one that's in the annual catalog, which is the black and white, and this is called the Gingham Ribbon. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna take a length of it, and I am going to cut just like so. And I am going to use the Light Cherry Cobbler and I am just gonna run the edge of that 
across that ribbon. And because this is alcohol ink, it will not take very long for it to dry on this ribbon. But I am gonna set that aside and just give it a couple of seconds while I assemble this card to kind of sit there and dry so I don't get red all over my hands. Okay, now what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna start with the large one and I'm gonna add it all the way to the bottom so the bottom of each one of your points are gonna touch the bottom of your card like this. And so what you wanna do is make sure that you just watch your sides because that's probably the most important part. Now, knowing that I'm not gonna put glue because this top point is going to be hanging over, I'm just gonna put glue on the bottom portion of this. Put that point right at the bottom of my score mark. and make sure I line that up straight. Okay, that looks pretty straight. Then my next one is going to come in here and it is, you're gonna watch your other square. When you measure this one, you're gonna make it even. So I like to line up these two bottom edges down here to the bottom edge of your next biggest. So I'm not really paying too much attention up here. I'm really paying attention to these two sides because they're gonna be very flush with those. They're gonna line right up and that's when you know that you're straight. So again, this one, only this very tiny bottom is going to touch that paper. So watching this line and watching this line, I kind of just put my finger against there and just kind of push it up. And then I know that that is straight. Okay, and I know that's gonna fold up, so that is perfect. Then my last one here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Watching my bottom lines here, I'm gonna Make sure those are flush against each other. And again, you're only going to put glue on the very, very bottom portion of this. Okay. It's perfect. Okay, give that a couple of seconds to finish drying. I don't think I cut enough of that paper. Maybe this will work. Nope. So I need to cut another. Whoops, I pulled that out of my other card. Dang it. All right, I need another piece. And let me tell you the measurements of that. So for the inside, oh, come on. For the inside, or the, not necessarily inside, but for the back side of your card back here, this is where you're gonna be able to write your sentiment. You need a piece of basic white that is going to measure two and three quarters by five and a quarter. So two and three quarters. I forgot to cut that. And I know this is already five and a quarter because it was an inside piece. Yep. So this would be your outside or your back panel. You can stamp, you can do whatever you choose on that. If you wanna put a sentiment on there like you would a card, I'm going to just leave it alone so it gives you more space to write since we've kind of already put our um, sentiments in the inside of this card. Okay, so just like that, but we have a little bit more to go on this. As you see, I have my ribbon and I've got these two little greeneries here. 
So I'm going to just lay this kind of flat so I can see what I have going on here. And taking my two little greenery pieces, I am, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to take them and I'm just gonna glue the two ends together. Just like that. And just hold them just a couple of seconds. And then I'm going to place those, making sure that they're not going beyond the bottom here. I'm going to just place those just like that in the middle. And just adding a little bit of glue down the stem of those because I want them to be free flowing at the tops. I'm going to hold that just a second. Okay, now I'm going to use my little bow jig and I am going to make a little bow. I'm just going to tie this just like so. I think that might be a little bit too little, but maybe that'll work. Yeah, I think that's too little. Let's undo this. And I'm gonna move this over one more. If my fingers will work for me, There we go. That's better. That looks much better. Okay. There is my bow. Now we need to grab a mini glue dot. And add that right to the center of that. Kind of fluff our bows up, just like that. Let's cut off some of these hangies. like that and voila card number two is done and there we go there is our little step card just like so isn't that so neat it just adds so much interest to a card I just think it is beautiful and you've got just enough of that shimmer on there you don't really need to have any embellishments, if you want to, by all means, add embellishments to it. But I think with just this gold on here, it just really adds a lot. And you've got the gold in that paper. And how fun is that? I mean, somebody can set that on their desk. I mean, probably need to push it in a little bit more, but it's just cool. And then you've got the sentiment in here. You've got the image in the back. It's just really kind of a neat, fun card. And it fits inside of an envelope. So how cool is that? Because it's your five and a half. So if you were to take your envelope and slide it right inside of the envelope. Now it's a little tricky because you do have those steps, but it will work, I promise you. Just like that. And then your card seals shut and out the door it goes to make somebody have a wonderful Christmas card to display. <laughs> okay, so that is, again, card number two. All right, so let me move some of my mess so I can now get to card number three. Um, Do I need... 
Okay, card number three, here we come. So card number three, we are going to do this beautiful little wreath. Now, does this card look familiar to you? Do you know that you've seen this card? And I know you're probably saying, no, nope, no, I haven't. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, actually you have, and let me show you where you've seen this card. Now, it's gonna blow your mind because you're gonna be like, okay, I have seen that card, but once you see how gorgeous this is here versus there it is on that catalog. That is the same card right there. What a huge difference, right? Because it's not dimensional here. It is just flat. But then when you see all the dimension, because we've got all these different layers popped up on this beautiful card. And I did do a couple of few little things that are different. On here, they've got these red little pieces. I decided to do red because I thought they popped more. They have it in wild wheat on here. So we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna make this beautiful card because I want you guys to see that you can use images in the, the catalog and make beautiful cards from that. Use the, your catalogs as your inspiration. That's what they're there for. Okay, so let's get all of our pieces out. Okay, so our card base, we have a thick basic white scored at four and a quarter. Where's my bone folder? Okay, so there is my card base and it looks a little bit crooked, so let me fix that. There we go, that's better. Then we need our layer that is going to go on top. Now this is four by five and a quarter and this is regular basic white. This is not a thick piece. Then we've got our little piece of basic white. It is what I'm going to stamp the piece on earth on. I've got my little cherry cobbler piece of scrap, which is what I'm gonna do these little uh, twigs on. Then I've got some of that uh, designer series specialty paper that I'm going to do a couple of the sprigs from so we can put those on there. Then I have a big piece of white here. Now this big strip of white is because I need to stamp out four of those images, color those, die cut them, and then we're going to add this all together on this beautiful card. So I am going to stamp this times four and I'm going to, I should have had a couple of them done, but I just want to show you guys. Now we have all four of those stamped. I'm going to stamp the sentiment piece on earth on that little white scrap here.
Now we need to do some coloring before I do any um, uh, die cutting. So I am going to use my old olive light. And the way I do this process is I do try to, if I don't miss anything, um, do each color at a time because I've already got it in my hand. I'm going to go ahead and complete all of these at the same time. Oh my gosh, you guys, my stomach is growling. <laughs> I hope you guys can't hear it. I thought I would be all good because I kind of had a big lunch. I had leftover from our, the few little leftovers that we had from Thanksgiving. I had from for lunch, I shared with my daughter. And I thought, oh, well, I'll be good. I'm not really that hungry right now. Well, my stomach is telling me otherwise. And hopefully you guys don't hear it yelling at me. Because that would be really, really embarrassing. Okay, and then I need to use the... What did I use? Okay, I also use the light um, old olive for the smaller little leaves as well. Now I didn't do any shadowing on this. I just stuck with the colors. This is probably the most time consuming part of this card is coloring in. But again, there's not a whole heck of a lot to it. It's just you're doing four of them. Oops, I missed a leaf. Oops, I missed a couple of leaves. Everything starts blending together as you keep doing these. Okay, then I'm going to grab my light shaded spruce and I'm just gonna do these little holly leaves.
trying to do it quick, you guys. I know this is kind of a boring part. You're like, okay, lady, I know how to color, thanks. We're almost done. Thank you, Linda, for sharing. <sighs> okay. Now, we're in the home stretch. I am going to grab the light uh, cherry cobbler. And this goes pretty quick. But this is like the finishing touch. You really need the red in there because since there's a little bit of it, it really makes it pop with that red. Look, three more left, woohoo. Okay, there we go. All right, now, now that that part is done, we need to bring out the, I'm gonna bring the big one in this time, okay? I need to move some of this stuff out of the way so this thing can sit here and I can get things rolling through here. I don't need this plate, but I do need these. Okay, so. I am going to start die cutting these. Now, with this, you have one of this, so you have to do this four times. Um, we're gonna pull this one out, we need that. Okay, I don't think we need, oh, we do need this one for the red. And then on the other dies, so let's go ahead and do this so we don't confuse any dies and any sets. This one I'm gonna set right there because it needs to go on there also. You guys see what I'm doing? Um, the little red with, it gives you five of those or, yep, you get cut five of those at a time. We only need three, but. What is on there? All right, line this up just like so. Put a piece of tape on there, this one. This one is good. Okay, so there are all five of those. Again, I only need three, so I'm just going to put those down here. Just like that. Now, on this little green piece, that's what I was saying, we need those uh, little uh, spruces. Now, those ones came in this same set also. I thought they were in the other one, but 
they're not. So I'm going to do this like so. Move this up to the next one. Line it up. Okay, like that. Okay, run this through. Okay, stick that down. Here is, see this one cuts a little bit more of a detailed little sprig and that's what we want. So I'm gonna do that again on this end. Okay, we're getting there, I promise. The time consuming part, but it is so worth it at the end when you see the finished product after you have done all this hard work and you have a gorgeous card to show for all your work. Okay, so this is going to go on here and then we have one last piece that we have to do some die cutting on and it is the background piece that has those extra little detailed parts on it and I'm going to show you that okay those are done okay we've got those four pieces now on let me get these put away yeah In the other die set, we have, let me get it. These are those two pieces that I was telling you about that are for your background and I'm throwing them because that's fun. Not really, but good thing I didn't lose it completely. All right, so these two pieces, the way we're gonna do these is we are going to set this on here. This is that uh, layer that we're going to use over the top. So what we're gonna do with this is we're going to take this one and just place these. I'm gonna do that one there and this one's gonna come kind of up above it, just like that. And I'm not even gonna worry about tape. I'm just gonna go right through. Now, when we do that, we're going to have these little pieces here, but I'm just going to leave it alone for the time being. And we're going to come over here and do two more right like that. And you're just going to see them kind of in the center of this wreath. Grab it and take this one and go, I'm gonna flip it around, not that it really matters, but I'm gonna go down kind of further, take this one up over here. And as you can see, I'm doing this with no like rhyme or reason. And then I'm gonna do, oh, not lose anything. I'm gonna do this one. How do I have it on my sample here? I'm gonna do, let's see, what do we got here? I'm gonna do this one. One more on that. All right. So I'm going to place these back in here. OK, 
Okay, and I think we have everything die cut out. So now when we take this off of here, we have got all these little messes. So I just take my finger and just rub those out of there. And then just as I wipe the back, <clears throat> they just kind of fall out. I do have one of those little brushes that comes with your take your pick, but I just don't have it over here. And by the time I was gonna try to mess with something like that, I can already have this done by hand. Now there might be a few that decide to hang on I'm not that picky about it. I don't care. They can stay in there. They'll fall out eventually. If you're picky, you can take your take your pick tool and just simply poke some of those little extras out. <clears throat> I'm just gonna leave some of those in there because it doesn't really matter, okay? And again, you have a mess. <laughs> You've got confetti with no party. <laughs> okay, go like that. Sorry to make all that noise. Now, we're gonna bring in our little vacuum again because this is the perfect time for our little pig. He's a hungry little pig. He's perfect for that. Okay, so here is our piece and it has gotten a little bit wrinkly, but that's okay. We're gonna just roll with it. So what I do is first I take just a little dry fit, laying these on top of each other to create my wreath. And then I try to make sure I can get them in a circular motion. This one's going to actually go on top of that. And then I just start gluing them down. So what I do is I take a dimensional and I just put it on the back. So I don't put any glue on the front yet because then if I need to turn this, I can. So that's gonna go first, then the next one. Still again, just adding a glue dot to the back. Cause see if I need to turn this, I can. Helps if I take the backing off of that. Can't stick with that on there. Okay, and then I've got one more to go, perfect. Okay, just like that, there is my wreath. Now what I'm going to do is this is going to get popped up on my base here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab my dimensionals that. Now this is going to go right on the front of my card base, just like that. And I like those being lifted up, so I'm going to leave those alone. And then what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take these and I'm going to glue these together just with a little bead of glue. Ugh. 
Get the glue booger off. Can't do anything with the glue booger. Oh, thank you so much, Denise. I aim to please. You're welcome. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I would hate to bring you an ugly card. I mean, that would be not cool, right? Okay, though, that's going to go right there. I might want to move that up just a skosh, but that's good. Okay, I'm going to actually take off because I can see that I have kind of went over time. So I'm just going to pull this off of here, okay, and just show you how I'm going to do this, okay, because I can recut this out. So what you need to do is you need to fussy cut. You need to fussy cut your piece on earth, okay? Out of your little piece. So just take your scissors and lightly go around and it is my most enjoyable <laughs> part of crafting, but it is what it is. Okay, so then I don't know where the, I don't know if I did, forgot to bring my seal over apparently, but I'm going to just take one of these little uh, glue guys and just run a small bit of adhesive on there i'm going to take two i know one kept a hold so i'm just not going to mess with it i'm going to take two little pieces you know just oh so you know in length what this is roughly about two and a half inches in length and then I'm just going to stagger those on the back of my piece on earth. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere this with a glue dot. Front and back maybe like that. I'm going to place that kind of down in the bottom corner over here or quarter, just like that. Then our little piece on earth is going to get added right to that. I think I'm gonna actually, I was thinking I should do, do it with a dimensional. So let's grab a big dimensional. Place that right in the center there. Make sure that's really adhered down to our ribbon and then that is going to get popped up right on top of here. I know we already put a glue dot but I want some dimension to that. So that's going to sit just like that. Then we need to grab our little red, you know how we cut out four of those, five of those? Um, I think it's five in that little thing. I'm just going to add just a little dot of glue to the back of this. And then I am just going to push it right behind my little sentiment. Okay, and then grab this one here. And I'm going to have this one sticking out over here off the piece to just add a little bit of extra of that color there that we need. And what I would probably do for the inside, we could either take again this little holly leaf. Put that there. Hmm, I was thinking of doing some of those berries, but I don't like that. Um, let's see, we do have some berries right here that we could stamp. Or we could just leave it like that and put the word, let's do Merry Christmas. Okay, there's Christmas. So I'm gonna stamp that. Am I gonna stamp it in that or am I gonna use a color? I think I'm just gonna do black. 
Hmm. Okay. I'm going to stamp Christmas right here. Okay. And then I'm going to grab this blocked out lettering of Mary. And I think I'm going to do that in cherry cobbler ink. Right over here, right above that. Okay, and then I think I'm going to actually do this again. needs one more but I don't know where there we go now I can already tell you guys that I messed up because I should have put another layer in this because as soon as I go to color these in it is going to bleed right through the back of my paper. So I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm going to not mess with it. And I can always put another layer restamp on this and cover all that because you're not going to see any of that from the back. But just to give you guys an idea of how I would do the inside of that card to make it pretty also, but I would color these in. So you would have some more color on the inside also. So there is card number three. What do you guys think of that? Again, just taking a simple layout that is already in our um, catalog and just carrying it over to create your own card. It is great inspiration. It is a great way to really utilize your catalog. So let me bring in all three of the cards that we made tonight. Oops, and I just turned my light off. I do that all the time. All right, so there is card number one along with our really cool step up card here, card number two. Get all my mess out of the way. So card number two, and then our beautiful card number three. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me tonight. I know I ran a little bit over time than what I normally do. I normally give myself a two hour block, but you know what, when you've got some pretty cool cards to show, sometimes it's worth going over that two hour mark and just doing what you gotta do to show, you know, some beautiful um, different cards for you guys. This is a big set and I really wanted to try to feature as much of that, um, those two different stamp sets for you guys and I really think these three cards kind of do that so you can see all the different elements of how you can use the different parts in this these two bundles so do you guys have any questions for me if so you can drop them in the comments i do always come back and read the comments so just so you guys know so if um you guys have a question leave it for me don't forget that this week, this is Make It Monday for this week. If you place a $35 order or more and use my host code here, you are going to get all the absolute fun things to create these beautiful cards. Oh, but you know what? I forgot the most important part to this card that is going to throw this card over the edge. Um, I am using the festive pearls here and I am going to use the gold because we've got some gold bling going on on this card. So I'm just going to add three of those just around the edge here. This one probably needs to be moved up just a skosh. And then we're going to add one there, 
one there and another one up here in the corner. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got a even number. We need to make it odd just like that. And there is the completed card with all of those beautiful little festive pearls on there. I think that just really steps it up to a whole nother level with all that bling. So there you guys go. Have a wonderful week. Again, I will not be live next week. Um, I did promise you guys that I was going to make it, that 3D um, card folder that was sent to me um, on my birthday. So I will get that made this week. It will not be a live video. So watch for it. I will get it posted. It will just be a video um, that will be uploaded here along with YouTube as well. So have your guys a... Um, very, very wonderful couple of weeks. I will be able to, if you place the order with me this week, I will get these um, out in the mail for you this week. If you place an order with me next week, you're still going to get this kit. So this kit is going to run for the next two weeks. So just so you know, so you don't think that I forget about you as my customer next week as well, you will get this kit also, but I won't have it um, ready for you until we get back from vacation. All right, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful next couple of weeks and, um, take care of yourselves and be safe. All right, you guys. Bye-bye.